my friend Nathan Jones is well admired and respected in the senior living profession. Uh, he is 10 years my junior, and he launched his own company, Dash Media, at probably the most opportune time to start any business, which was right in the middle of the COVID pandemic. If you haven't had a chance to see his team's work, uh, pause, do yourself a favor, and go follow him on Instagram. Uh, if you search Senior Living Stories, you're going to find some amazing videos, and they really are masters at the craft of telling stories worth telling. I, uh, you know, I initially reached out to Nathan to talk about some quote unquote hard skills as it relates to storytelling, but it turned out we had a different story that we needed to tell. Uh, in a prep session for our intended episode, Nathan ended up in the hospital and our ensuing conversation helped me to realize that we all fall into this hustle trap. It's not necessarily hustle culture, but it is a trap that we put ourselves in and that if left unchecked it really can lead to some pretty disastrous personal consequences uh, not the least of which is our own health and well-being I, I related to the story so much because i experienced it myself and i know that so many of our colleagues have as well i really hope you enjoy this special episode that gave my friend nate and i a chance to have this pretty important conversation ready let's level up Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Level Up Leadership Podcast. I am here today with my friend, Nate, Nathan Jones. How you doing, man? Doing good. Happy it's Friday. It is Friday. At the yeah. time that we are recording this, it is Friday. That's right. It is. And the dogs are still undefeated. So, <laughs> As of that. now, the Longhorns are also undefeated. So... Uh, if, if you all are not watching this on YouTube and you're listening to it on Spotify or something, pause, go over to YouTube. You want to see Nathan and I having a conversation instead of <laughs> listening. So, uh, what are you wearing, man? You know, I got my dash media gear on, but, uh, I had to match. This is actually my mom. She painted this. Oh, uh, nice. Painting. She gave it to me when I graduated college, but wearing my, my Georgia Bulldogs hat. <laughs> we finally get to play someone good tomorrow so we're playing auburn just excited it's about time yeah it only took a few games to have a serious opponent um i am wearing my ut hat today and my bella groves t-shirt so um fun fun episode at least to watch i love it yeah yep. um let me cue this up for everybody so i reached out to you oh i don't know several weeks ago and so the the nature of my podcast, Level Up Leadership Podcast, uh, we talk about how leaders can develop head and heart skills. And so, you know, each episode is dedicated to something either in the realm of head, which would be business acumen, things that you want to know that are kind of quantifiable things. Um, and then heart, which represents more of your relationship management skills, empathy, self-awareness, you know, things like that. And so I actually reached out to you a little bit more for the head episode, which is if you don't know my friend Nathan, uh, just you know turn on LinkedIn or YouTube or any social media channel, you're going to see some amazing content related to aging services. So I called my buddy so because I wanted to level up in my knowledge there, and uh, so I reached out to him. I hadn't heard back from Nathan in a couple of days, and I was like, you know, I'm going to send him another text message, and I didn't hear from him. So I recorded a video. I said, hey, Nathan, I'm still thinking about you. Call me back. And right away, Nathan calls me back. And I was like, hey, I knew that was going to work. <laughs> and uh, he called me back and he was like, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, man. And he said, I was actually in the hospital. And I was like, oh, crap. I did. <laughs> I did. the. I did the thing. And I was like, foot in my mouth. And then the tone really changed. And I was like, man, what's going on? And and you kind of wanted to go past it and like talk about talk about business and you know the the episode and you know think tank and all that but uh you know i was like hold on hang on hang on a second you just said something really major you're in the hospital uh are you okay and uh you kind of walked me through that anyway this episode is a diversion from what was intended and i think this is a more important conversation so um let's let me go back there nathan are you you doing okay what what happened and um you know what what were you going through when you called me back yeah uh well first thanks for having me yeah uh, 
it's uh it's been a fun few years getting to know you and following you on linkedin and you know you're you're doing amazing things in this this industry uh thanks man i've seen your living and even beyond that so appreciate you having me on yeah but i mean uh, as you know, I think we probably started our businesses kind of similar. Yeah. Time, you know? Around the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When was it? For, when did you start Bella Groves? Yeah. So, you know, I start b- before Bella Groves, I started doing my consulting work and it started my podcast. So that was in like the beginning of 2021 is when I started with all of that. And then uh, Bella Groves, our dementia care company started like in the beginning of 2022. Yeah, so Dash Media beginning of 2022 January, uh, and we've grown quite a bit, and it's been fast, yeah, have. <laughs> changing like crazy. You know, we we have a team of amazing people, and it's go go go. You know, yeah. also last year, I sold a house, bought a house, um, got married or got engaged, and got married, got yeah. a dog, turned thirty all of these things and i i just i don't think i've stopped to like breathe and i've uh by no means am complaining about any of that yeah. it's all been blessings but i think sometimes you know in a in a fast-paced world environment like that you kind of forget about stopping and taking yeah. a deep breath and just spending time with your fan family and friends and um so I think it caught up to me and I think, you know, I, I don't, we still don't really know what, what's going on with me, but yeah, just had a couple of episodes where I, my body just shut down and, you know, I don't, I really don't know what's going on still, but I've been better in the last week. And I think when you called me, it was just like, I just got out of the hospital. And so yeah, it was really fresh. And I think the further we're going along with tests, they've ruled out all the scary stuff, but it may be stress related. It may just, that's what it's looking like more. And, you know, moving into my thirties mm-hmm. out of your, when you're in your twenties, you kind of think you're invincible yeah. a little bit. And, um, I don't know, before this, I didn't really, I thought stress was just kind of a mental thing. And I think, you know, if you just ignore it long enough, then you're, you're going to be, you'll be fine. Uh, you just kind of suck it up and keep everything internal and keep pressing ahead. And it wasn't like, uh, I felt stress. I just think I got used to stress mm-hmm. and as a small business owner, that's growing. Uh, I think sometimes we can be more effective at our job. This is what I'm learning kind of on the fly. I can be more effective at my job by taking that 30 minutes walk with my dog and my wife and putting my phone leaving my phone at home yeah. rather than taking my break, throwing in my AirPods and making a few call, phone calls on my walk. You know, I, there's, there's definitely a difference in how you disconnect yeah. uh, to take care of yourself. And so that's what I'm learning. Yeah. You know, I, I relate so much to that feeling of like, you don't realize it's brewing. You don't realize it's catching up to you. And um, I saw this, image um on 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 linkedin is like uh it's a battery and it's it says take a break here not here and it's pointing to like the middle of the battery at yellow versus the end of the battery at red when it's drained it's like take a break in the middle not at the end yeah. and um you know and and when we were on the phone uh you know talking the other day it's like man you know what I felt this. I've actually gone through it. I've gone through what you're talking about now. I, I went through it myself and I realized I've actually never really talked to anybody about it. And I think, you know, for, for you and I, um, look, I'll say earlier, earlier you were saying very nice things about me. So I'm going to embarrass you in return. Um, you know, Nathan, like everybody I ever like bring your name up with, they're like, oh my God, Nathan, like they all feel like they're very close friends with you, which is an amazing quality, you know, for you to, for you to have. And it's that, you know, people, people, whether they met you once or, you know, have, have known you for years, they, they genuinely feel like, oh yeah, Nate, he's my buddy. And that's a really cool quality. And, um, but I think there's also a danger and, and, and to some degree, you know, like when people tell me, you know, something nice about like, Hey, you're, you know, I love your stuff on LinkedIn or I like how you write and you're so inspirational, et cetera. 
you know, part of you wants to uh, avoid compliments like the plague because uh, they're awkward. But the other part of it too is like, oh, good. I hope I am making that difference. And I think if we're being real, we're probably also aware that it's a little bit of a persona that like we have to keep up a little bit, right? Like we're not that way all the time. Like my wife, it's funny, my wife doesn't th think of me that way. So if she <laughs> if she ever runs into somebody who's like, oh man, you know, James is so great, et cetera, et cetera. And she's, she's just like groaning and, you know, rolling her eyes like, James, really? Yeah. And, uh, do, do you ever get that in your world? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, my friends kind of say that. I was on a, a work call with a friend the other day in a professional setting and he's been my friend for a decade and it was the first time he saw me like in work yeah. mode. and he's like that's he, he <laughs> laughed at me after he said that's funny like yeah he's like you're good at that but i just always see is this goofy yeah kid that we all laugh at um so yeah. it's funny how people view you through different lights but i mean i, I totally hear what you're saying on um this like not persona but I think sometimes uh, the more people that feel that way, and I'm, uh, yeah. but first of all, I want to say by no means, I don't want anybody reaching out like for a pity party or like, right. hey, okay, I'm perfectly fine. I think we talked about that too, is like, yeah. um, we're not doing, we're not talking about this for like a self pity party. We're talking about it just because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people probably go through things yeah. like this. Um, but to your point, you know, you become close with so many different people. And what I've learned, it, it, it's hard to like, uh, keep, I don't want to say keep up, but like, I used to be really mm -hmm. good at like responding right away. And now, yeah. you know, it's like, I have to respond to my wife, I have to respond to my family, I have to respond to, you know, my two or three best friends when they need me. And then when you have when, when it, when too much communication racks up, you almost get like, this overbearing weight of like, yeah. I don't have enough hours in the day to not that I have, you know, tons of people reaching out all the time, but I think the more you you grow your network, the more you feel this pressure that you yeah. have to keep in touch with everyone. I think sometimes it can be overwhelming. So I'm still kind of searching for a, a solution to how, how I can keep building these strong relationships that I, you know, keeps me going. Yeah. Uh, but give into that relationship as much as, uh i've always give yeah i i i find myself in a very similar place of i think when you make yourself accessible to people through content you know and you and i we're um you know we're we're preaching to the choir here with each other that you know content is the way that you know from a business perspective especially in aging services it's a it's a completely underutilized platform to um to get the things accomplished that you have set out to accomplish, right? Mm -hmm. And so you are really great at that in in video form, and I've taken a lot of practice to get good at that in in written form. And by the way, P.S. I am leveling up in terms of video for next year, so I'm get I'm getting ready for that. And um, oh, love it, uh, yeah. Um, but you know, but back to the main point at hand is like as you grow, you know, your your audience. Uh, because at the end of the day, it is part of what we're asking for is that we want a broader audience where we can make this change. The double-edged sword is like, well, now people feel really connected to you. And especially if you offer, like you've reached out or you've taken a phone call or you've sent a text message and um, and you feel this need to like continue. It feels like common courtesy, right? Like dad dad taught me is like, hey, if you if you make a commitment, follow through on it. And there are all of these inputs like happening in our in our brains and our lives. And you're like, you know, if I'm being honest, there's so many times I feel like the measure of myself, like just not even as a business person, but as a as a man, you know, in all of the things that was beat into my head is like, follow through, be good on your word, you know, like work hard, all of those things are like, just somewhere in the operating system and I don't even know that they're you know running and then it takes some big event to like crash man so I you know I'll share a little bit of my story I, I shared I shared it with you uh when we were talking and this was the point it's like no I I by the way I'm okay too I don't I don't necessarily need people to reach out to me but I guarantee you Nate because we're having this conversation somebody's going to reach out to you somebody's going to reach out to me 
And I think that's why we don't talk about it enough is like, we feel embarrassed or we feel like, Hey, you know, I don't want people to worry about me and uh, think I'm having a pity party. And maybe that's why we don't talk about it, but that's the disservice too, right? It's like, maybe we have to take some of those, you know, field some of those phone calls and text messages because in the end, you know, you and me having this conversation, maybe we're going to reach somebody at the, you know, the middle part of that yellow battery before they get to the red. Um, so long intro to my story. Uh, well, on that, before you get yeah. into your story, on the yellow battery, it's funny in our company, we're talking about this right now and it relates to business is, you know, when to hire, yeah. do you hire when you're, everyone's at full capacity and you absolutely have to have that mm -hmm. someone or do you hire when everyone's at 80% and you see this growth trajectory before everyone becomes overwhelmed. Yeah. And it's the same thing with yourself. Like I, I think that you don't wait until you're at capacity and want to pull your hair out and overwhelmed and all this stuff to like yeah. necessarily talk about it, which is what I, I mean, I'm definitely guilty of that I don't talk about hardly anything with my, how I'm feeling. Yeah. Uh, but I'm learning, you know, you yeah. talk about it when you're at 80%, like you're saying, you're at yellow battery, not empty. Yeah. Uh, it's helpful. So yeah, it's, it's, how it relates to business. You know, for, for guys that don't normally talk about this, it's like we hit record and started talking about it. So it's a little bit of a practice in, in, in <laughs> vulnerability, like as we're going. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So my story, you know, with this is that, uh, this was back, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. I don't want to be too specific, um, but, you know, I, w I was in a really, really high pressure job. Um, my wife and I had just had our first kid. Uh, so she was just born. I was just becoming a dad for the first time. And um, we had also planned on me returning to school. So I was doing my MBA program at uh, the University of Texas in Austin, uh, hook them horns. And so I, you know, I had these three major things going on, like going back to school after a long hiatus, becoming a dad for the first time, you know, high stress job that honestly I wanted, like I wanted to be in that role. And it gave me a lot of, you know, feelings of accomplishment being, being in that role. And just slowly it started you know, building up. And I wasn't conscientious of it. I wasn't aware of it. It's just, I knew it was happening. Um, in retrospect, I knew it was happening. And then um, just when I felt like I couldn't handle anymore, my dad got sick. He got really, really sick. He got cancer. Um, and I've shared some of that story on LinkedIn. So people do know some, some about that. But these four forces in my life, it was like, I was constantly like I had four windows open on my computer and I was like constantly trying to go back and forth, trying to be good at each one of those things. Um, and it was hard. It was, it was really, really hard. And, um, and like, I just, my brain sh just started shutting down and I, I couldn't sleep. I was jittery. My hands were shaking. Um, I had all of those signs of like, just, just chronic stress and burnout. Um, and eventually my wife, you know, she was like, babe, we got to change something like this. This is not, this is not okay. This is not good. I'm worried about you. Um, you know, I was, I was dropping my kid off at daycare because, because this place I worked in was an hour away. So I had to drop my kid off and she was the first one at daycare. And then she was the last one picked up at daycare. And I was like, this is the first experience of her life is her dad dropping her off, you know, before everybody else and picking her up. And when everyone's gone, and, um, and on top of all of that, you know, all this just harmful stress was, was adding up in my body. And, uh, you know, thank God she, she pulled me out of that. And she said, look, we can make more money. You're, you're going to recover in your career. This is not, you know, end all be all we're going to be okay, but we're only going to be okay if you're here. So, Great. um, we, you know, we decided together, like, okay, I put my notice in, I put a 30 day notice in, in the job. I didn't know what I, what I was going to do next. I didn't have another job lined up and it was scary. You know, I was like, I'm, I'm accruing student debt. I, I feel this financial pressure of helping my dad during his, you know, medical stuff. And we, and we had a kid for the first time, but through all of that, you know, my wife was like, we need you more than anything else. We'll, we'll recover with everything else. And so I just stopped. I just stopped working and 
it ended up being about a 90 day ish, you know, three month hiatus from work. I didn't, I didn't go on indeed. I didn't write anything on LinkedIn. I was just, I was just away and I got to spend time with my daughter. So it went full circle the other way. I went from no time to like immersed time. Uh, and it was, it was amazing. Um, you know, yeah. I don't talk enough about that story and maybe I should, but, um, did you, you know, have a mentor or somebody that to, like outside yeah. of your, your family, did you have a mentor or somebody to help you talk like that you talk through some of those tough, especially on the work side of things that you talk through those things with? Yeah. You know, I think, um, I I've developed some mentors now and I think maybe it's because of that experience, Nathan, that I realized I need people to help while I'm in the yellow, right? Before I get to the red. So I, I don't know that I had mentors per se. I certainly reached out to friends and colleagues in the industry and I was like, hey, am I am I making a bad mistake here? Just like, just cold turkey, you know, stopping this. Um, and to be fair, if I'm being if I'm being frank, I didn't talk to a whole bunch of people. I talked to, you know, maybe one or two people in my close circle, but I felt embarrassed if, if I'm being honest. I was like, I was embarrassed that it felt like I couldn't handle it and um and i was just kind of you know and also in this business in senior living not it, it's not that you're quitting on the job it feels like you're quitting on your promise to help people so you've got yeah. added layers of pressure of like um and i think that's where this feeling of martyrdom comes in in senior senior care is like you're putting yourself on the line for the greater good and there are probably people who you know at worst exploit you but at best don't understand you or the value of like taking breaks enough that they're helping you get like um watch out for that right and so that's something i look out for on my team now is like um you know for bella groves we built in mental health days and i said guys you use your mental health days when you are like feeling okay not great, not terrible, but okay. You know, I want you to take those days and they're not PTO for you to go to your dentist office or, you know, get your license updated. You know, your mental health days are for you to focus on you and whatever that means, you know, go do it. So, um, you know, I'm trying to model that too. Now with my team is like, I I'm scheduling days. I put it on the calendar and I, and I label it mental health days, not PTO, um, and I actually let the team know, like, hey, this is some of the stuff I'm going to do on my, you know, ment mental health day. And I think because of that, they're probably going to honor that time a little bit more, even uh, even more than if I was on PTO. Yeah, that's good. I mean, we're, we're we've been talking a lot about that too. Is like flexibility. It was funny. We, our team, we all had forms, and I put seven different things that. Uh, I had them rank seven things about the company that were most important to them and why they joined Dash. And mm -hmm. I was like, pay, benefits, health insurance, flexibility. Flexibility was everyone's number one of being able mm -hmm. to like, when you need a, a break, uh, taking, taking a break. And in, in my opinion, um, you know, we have like, everyone on our team has another passion outside of dash media and they mm -hmm. want to invest in that. And I think what I've heard from other people working at, you know, companies and, and even our own team is in past jobs, like spending time cre creating for this other passion was a conflict of interest in some regards mm -hmm. for, uh, their previous employer and me, for me, I would rather someone give me 40 hours a week and 10, 15 hours doing what they love rather than 60, 70 hours just to dash. Because it's like, I know that those 40 hours are going to be more meaningful to them and they're going to be, their, their fire is going to be lit more if they're able to fill their cup in other areas. Cause no job is going to be perfect and yeah. happy and, everything all all the time and so i think in those those tough moments having an outlet that has nothing to do with your job yeah you know, for me it's playing basketball it's playing video games with my friends it's for going walks with my dog traveling with my wife going snowboarding in the winter like these things i don't want anything to do with I, i'm not listening to a podcast to do mm -hmm. with work i'm not investing in my education at that point i do that all the time but mm -hmm. those 
moments, what I'm learning is it's really important to disconnect completely book. And, and in turn, when you're in your job and you're in your role, you yeah. can get so much more to it uh, rather than running on empty 24 mm seven. -hmm. What do you think, um, you know, this, this kind of time frame now, because the reality is like, as we sit here now, we're having this conversation, you are, you're still in the middle of it, you know, to some, to some degree. So maybe irresponsible on my part, James Lee, please don't write to me, uh, audience, uh, and say, I just made it worse for Nathan. I hope not. Uh, <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, but we did talk about that a little bit of like, should we, should we do this recording now? Should we wait, you know, a month or two? Yeah. Um, why did you want to do it now versus later? Do you mind if I read something real quick that yeah. hit me? Yeah. So it was, we actually read it on our team and it goes so in line with storytelling. Yeah. Uh, and particularly storytelling in the world of senior living and you know, some people are uncomfortable reading out of the Bible because of the way the world is. This is out of Proverbs. So it's like very wisdom driven, whether you mm -hmm. have a faith in God or not, in Jesus or not, it, this is very valuable. And so this is why, I mean, it, mm -hmm. it says in Proverbs three thirteen, blessed are those who find wisdom, who gain understanding for she wisdom and understanding is more profitable than silver and yields better return than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with wisdom. Long life is in wisdom's right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant, and all her paths are peace. She is a life, a tr she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. And then, it, I mean, it keeps going on about wisdom for the rest of the chapter. And I was actually, after our talk, I was, every now and then I'll listen to Proverbs in the car just while I go, just the audio book. And I mean, you, we get caught up in these profits and hitting, you know, we all want to make money and, and yeah. do what we love to make money. But it's funny where we, sometimes we forget the wisdom that these seniors that we care for and that live in our communities or you know, wherever they are, the ones that we interact with, we forget what they tell us, <laughs> mm. uh, which is what they never say, go work an extra five hours through your kid's soccer game so that you can make, you know, an investor happy. They say, go to the soccer game. They say, go to that thing with your best friend. And I think that hit, I mean, that hits you. And it's like, yeah, there's things that I have a responsibility to do and do for our clients and our partners and our employees. And they know that I'm going to do it. But sometimes those things can wait till the morning or wait till the next day. And the world's not going to end. You know, I know that you guys are, we're making social media videos and, and yeah. content. You guys are taking care of people's lives. So it is different in that regard. But I think that what I love about your LinkedIn post and, and how you lead is it's like a team. It, it's a, you know, in a, in a football situation, if mm -hmm. somebody's making mistakes and not having a great game, great, the signs of a great team is other people can fill in yeah. and, and pick up the slack. And I, I think we got to lean on that. We, in, especially in senior living and aging services is where you see all these leaders and these people around these residents who tell them the blueprint they're yeah. giving them the wisdom that's more <laughs> profitable than these big returns and you yeah. know they're giving them the blueprint and we just sometimes we don't apply it because we think we have all the time in the world and we'll handle that later but for now i got to do my job and there's yeah. a balance there that that we have to really take seriously and i think both you know if you do that it still leads to where you want to go yeah so. Oh man, I'm having I'm having some uh, some real deep moments right now about um, I'm so guilty of this too, you know, because I think you know you you and I, I think we both think in terms of content, and we because it, content is part of our jobs, you know. It for for me, I don't get I don't get paid to write on LinkedIn, but almost every good professional thing that I can point to 
somehow traces back to it. Mm-hmm. Um, we met because of that. You know, um, I think most of my job opportunities come from that. All of my speaking engagements come from that. So there's a part of me that every experience that I have, it first passes the lens of like, ooh, this would make an interesting content, you know? And mm-hmm. so like resident wisdom content, leadership lesson content, my own insight, con- you know, it's like everything like now is, and this is something I honestly struggle with is like, let me just absorb the moment for the moment. And like, instead of thinking like, oh, wait, how am I going to write about this? Um, mm-hmm. Instead of just embracing and enjoying the moment. And it made me, it made me write down about wisdom. Um, thanks for sharing the proverb, by the way, because it, it does give us something to kind of root this conversation into it's like in our world, do we sometimes take wisdom and interpret it as content to be shared rather than a lesson to be learned, yeah. right? It's like I, you hear it, sometimes you hear it and it's like when you go to church or wherever, you're in a presentation or a session, you're like, ooh, this would be good for uh-huh. my buddy yeah. struggling with that or that would be good for that. But you never take time to say, this is good for me. Like I, (laughs) you're always, or like, this is a good LinkedIn post. This will get, you know, like you're saying, I I do the same thing. And uh, it's, there's some things that need to be good for you and you alone. And I think we have to recognize that a little bit. You know, maybe that's the, you know, like everything is a double-edged sword, right? And maybe storytelling for all the good that it does that we can't absorb it as just content we have to actually absorb the story right like that that was that was the nature of storytelling people told stories to you know warn one another to uh, pass legacy to teach you know storytelling was a way that humans connected beyond their own lives and that's that's where stories came from you know in its origin the bible i mean it came from just like, hey, I, I I learned this stuff. I need to pass it on to you. And so I'm sure before there was a written Bible, there were, you know, stories just, you know, told from one person to the next. And mm-hmm. it's like, you know, this day and age, you and I, you know, we if if we hear storytelling, we think of it as a business acumen skill, mm-hmm. you know, like going right back to the origin of this conversation. It's like I reached out to you initially to talk about storytelling as a business measurable quantifiable skill that will help you know leaders in senior living Mm -hmm. but look what we're doing now you know we're 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 telling a different story as we're going here and it's not storytelling for content sake it's storytelling for you know what do we have to learn from this yeah how i mean when when you uh now that you've kind of created this for lack of a better term, persona, like this, this following, this influence where people are going on LinkedIn and they're expecting James Lee, like to be, you know, content. Mm -hmm. Uh, How do you deal with the, the notion of like, is there an end to this? Like, do I run out of thoughts Mm -hmm. or do you ever think about that? Cause that's something I I think about sometimes like eventually, like, and I've heard from other people, it's like, I don't know what to post. I know you've heard that from, yeah, I'm going to start posting. I just don't know what to post. You have such an interesting life and such interesting perspective. I just don't have that. I don't know what to post. Mm. And do you like, do you ever worry that you get to that point too of like, now I don't have anything to post? <laughs> hmm. You know, the, the only times I honestly feel writer writer's block is when I'm forcing it, you know, yep. when I, when it's, when it's a, th- job when it's a thing i'm like oh you know i I haven't posted in a few days i'm supposed to post like if the motivation going into the post is something like that then i get writer's block then i get the writing fatigue then i get the um imposter syndrome i get all of those things start to creep in when the motivating factor is something that's not authentic to you know the, the the purpose of writing is it it's therapeutic you know, like people write because it is catharsis in some way. And it is for me, anytime I write and, and almost always the things that people resonate with, um, you know, that I put out on LinkedIn, it's stuff that took me two minutes to write, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, it, it flowed through me and I just needed to move my fingers to get it out. And so, um, when I share something because I feel it, um, and, and I, and I can tie it to my, 
purpose statement, which is like, I, I know that part of my value to relationships right now, uh, it professionally is that I want to help people find inspiration in themselves that they have all of the qualities within, within themselves to be the leader that they always wanted to be, because that was my path. And it's like, I, I think you and I are both doing something similar to this is that stories are meant to be relatable. They're meant to reflect you back in, you know, this video that you're watching, this LinkedIn post that you're reading, it's you, not Nathan or James. It's you reflected back to you. Yeah. I, well, I think that's such a, that's like the point. I asked that question because I kind of felt like that was your answer because mm -hmm. it's, the reason why people resonate, your content resonates with people is because it's you. It's yeah. not, it's not fake. You're not hitting a quota of you have to hit two posts per week or three right. posts per week. You may have seven posts a week. You may have one in two weeks, but whatever it is, it's because you, you have felt, you feel what you're writing. Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of times people want, what is the formula to getting an audience and getting a reach on LinkedIn? And the formula is when you feel some or th something or think something, yeah. tell people, people want to hear that. People right. don't want to read something that you typed into chat GPT yeah. and copy and paste it on LinkedIn. So know? I did that once. I posted something on chat GP, uh, from a chat GPT gener. I did it once and it was, it was like, it was just a weird experiment. Like it, it put all these emojis in there that I don't normally do. And uh, you know, the, the thing is there was enough in there that felt like it maybe could have been me. And, you know, mm -hmm. people liked it and wrote comments about it. Like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but at the end of the day, I was like, you know, it, it did have lower engagement, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just kind of an A-B test for me. But also I was like, uh, I was also thinking about to kind of tie it back to what, what we've been talking about all the way through this is like, how do you know to regulate? Like, how do you slow down? Especially like, you know, with you putting out content, me putting out content on LinkedIn, there is an internal pressure of like, I haven't posted anything in a while. I need to, I need to write something. Yeah. Um, but the really bad moments, if I'm being honest, sort of like if I'm home and like my kid wants to show me something that she wrote and I'm like, oh, hang on, let me just finish this sentence. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I really have to take stock of that moment of like, you know, when my parents went to work, they were not in the house. Right. So growing up, if dad or mom was home, they weren't working. They were at the house, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't interact with my dad or my mom unless they were not at work. Mm -hmm. But now I work wherever I'm at, right? So I'm I'm in the house. I'm picking them up. I'm taking a phone call from you know from a work situation, and but it's those moments, Nathan, when I'm like, okay, wait, this is a problem. If I'm editing or writing a LinkedIn post when my kid is like, Hey dad, I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I mean that, you know, part of my like algorithm on, on Instagram and TikTok, I guess sends me like dad videos and stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm not a dad yet, but I've, I've seen one that's kind of resonated with me. It's like your kids, all they want, you know, you have all these things coming into your, home when you get home after work and your kids want one thing in the whole world and that's the attention from two people mm -hmm. and that's all you have to give them well, yeah what, what, is are the, what are the balloons <laughs> <laughs> did I do an emotion that the balloon how did that happen <laughs> yeah that's you know what we're not going to edit that out you got to watch this on youtube because uh, my man nathan was giving a really amazing point and zoom gave us balloons <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. So well, maybe wouldn't that be crazy if Instagram or something, uh, if they just if they just know you so well, they're just sending you uh father videos because something's you know something. Maybe you never know the universe. <laughs> um, yeah, it is something to think through. Uh, you know, I'm so I'm forty. You're thirty. Uh, we thirty one. Thirty one. Yeah. So um, you know, we're we're almost a decade apart, but. You know, we we come from different places. We had different influences. We're doing different parts of, uh, you know, this this work in the field of aging. But you know, look how similar, you know, aspects of our stories are. And um, 
you know, I think they're these are kind of the hidden traps of hustle that we don't really realize are there. And um, I don't know, man. I and and I didn't have like takeaways going into this conversation with you, other than like, yeah, let's you know, let's let's talk like we normally do. We just we just happen to record it this time. But if I'm trying to think about, are there lessons here? Like, are there things that we for one another, you know, and for people that may be listening, like, oh man, yeah, I I, I needed to hear this message. I need to think through this myself. Um, you know, I'm I'm wondering like what what are the takeaways here? What what are you learning from this that you feel like, you know, I'm I'm gonna start applying wisdom in the moment rather than wisdom and reflection? Yeah, I mean, it, it really, I mean, it's why senior why I am a big proponent of people working in senior living and mm -hmm. aging services. It's we get this free reminder every day of what matters in your your dash, if as we call it. Yeah. Um, for those of that you don't that don't know, the dash, all that means is when someone uh, is passes away, there's a date they were born and a date they pass away. They can't control those two dates, but all they can control is how they live that dash in between those two dates. And um, so that dash, you only get one of those. You only get one, you know, it's a very, very brief uh, moment. And every day is a part of your dash and, and nobody knows how many days we have. And so, yeah. Um, I think in our industry, in our profession of, of, of working alongside these people who are towards the end of their dash and are reflective and live through the ups and downs of the world, we're constantly reminded of what matters. And I've never, we've probably interviewed a thousand seniors to this point over the last year and a half. And, um, like I said earlier, like nobody ever wishes they worked in, you know, extra, mm -hmm. they wish they worked harder. They not, and, and they all worked hard. I don't want the takeaway to be like, don't go, don't work hard because <laughs> seniors, you know, 90 year olds say that you don't have to work hard. Just go have fun with your friends. It's not what they say. They say the things that matter are your family and your friends and those moments in life that you're in the moment, not sharing, not necessarily sh sharing the moment online. Um, and so applying that, you know, we, we get that wisdom. And I think that we got to work to apply it. And mm -hmm. if we can, then I think that it doesn't mean that the, the, uh, the tough times go away and these struggles go away, but what Proverbs says, you get this peace, beyond all understanding yeah um if you apply that wisdom and it's more profitable than rubies it's more profitable than gold it's more profitable than silver and it can do more for you than any of those things and so yes you can work hard yes you you invest into the people that you're around um in your job and you know all that stuff but i think that you also invest in in yourself and don't not everything has to have an ROI, <laughs> yeah. you know, even in your personal life, you don't have to, like, I always I'm like, well, I have 30 minutes here where I could go on a walk and I'm not wasting time because I'm listening to hmm. a Gary V podcast. It's yeah. like, sometimes just go on a walk and go on a walk. Go on a walk. <laughs> yeah. What a novel <laughs> idea. Think. Yeah. Um, and laugh and you know so you know that's been my biggest takeaway is like we have soaked in a lot of this wisdom and knowledge from these seniors that are so happy yeah and I, I talked to a guy yesterday 102 years old and i said what's your purpose in life now like what are your goals and he said oh i have you know i have a big goal he said everybody that interacts with me i want them to be happier and i want mm -hmm. them to feel that from me he said, I wake up every day still 102 years old. And that's what I want to do. Damn. And it's like, I, like I had, he said, I have a purpose. And it was like, geez, like, you know, a lot of people, yeah, I told one of my friends that and they're like, nobody thinks that at 102 years old, they still have like things left that they need to give to this world, but he did. And I think that's what we, we can do with mm. 
um, the time that we have that, you know, and we don't know how much of that is. So that's amazing. I don't get too deep, but that's, that's what I've been reflecting on the last few weeks. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's the point of, you know, having richer relationships in our profession is that, uh, you know, how many surface level questions do we have at every conference at every, you know, get to know you zoom call, but it's rare, you know, to have uh, friends and, and and people that you're like, you know, we, we've gotten past all the like, what do you do for work? What do I do for work? You know, who do you know? Who do I know? Like, we've gotten past all of that. So like each conversation gets a little bit more rich, you know, a little bit more nuanced. And um, I think maybe that's that's part of this, too. Maybe that's part of the lesson here in this conversation is um, maybe because we're friends, maybe because we connected on this conversation uh, maybe it'll help us both because we know, you know, the next time like, oh, wait, I'm operating in the red here. I'm going to text my buddy James and, you know, he's going to be my lifeline for this um, yeah. or, you know, or vice versa. Um, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Les Stretch. Les Stretch has been my uh, lifeline. He uh, he's he's amazing. That, that would be my other yeah. recommendation to anybody is have someone. Les isn't much older than me. I don't. I don't know how old Les is. He's probably ten yeah. years older than me, but he's close enough to where it's like his experiences are not too far in his past. And yeah. just like having somebody to call, and I met him through LinkedIn. Yeah, or not. <laughs> um, and he was in your wedding, and he was the efficient of my efficient wedding. In yeah. your wedding, yeah, and um, in my marriage counseling. So he. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. So uh, having people like that, I think to, um, in your corner, I actually saw a video the other day. It's like, you need five types of friends, probably not going to remember them all. <laughs> yeah. It was someone that was like someone that you can call when, uh, someone wants to like to go to battle with Yeah. one that you can call when you just need to a break and you need to like disconnect and have fun and, go play a sport, go compete, do whatever you're passionate about with. You need somebody to call who is going to be proud of you when you make that million dollar sale yeah. or you do something big that's not jealous. And there's, I'll have to look up the other two and I'll send them to you, but there's, you gotta have that core group of people. And sometimes, you know, people can be multiple personas for yeah. you, but that's one thing I've learned too, is like depth in relationships is as, or more important in my opinion than having a wit, like wit yeah. relationship. Yeah. Like you said earlier, I have a lot of people that like, I have relationships with, but one of the things I'm, you know, want to build on is, is building more depth in yeah. those relationships. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, we talk about in social media vanity metrics, right. But in a way, some people adopt that in their own personal circles of like, um, you know, and, and I think there's something about conference culture and senior living too, of like, we do see so many people all the time. Uh, but it's like, you know, I just came from, I just came from a conference and it was like meeting, meeting, meeting person, 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 and you're on and you're on and you're on. And it's like, it's like people are almost collecting these little badges, right? Of like, oh, yeah, I met Nathan. Oh, I met James, you know, and I grabbed my photo with somebody. Um, but I am really, really cherishing those uh, you know, those, those relationships where it's like, hey, I saw you at the last one and now I get to like have the second conversation. And now the next time I see you, we're going to have the third conversation and it's depth, like you're talking about rather than like collecting, it's almost like we're collecting connections. Um, but you know, these, these relationships you know are important. You know, what bothers me about LinkedIn a little bit? Tell me. And <laughs> this okay. may be a whole note. We, I know we don't have a ton of time. <laughs> that's, that's all right. Um, the stuff that gets engagement, like if I post a selfie with James Lee, mm -hmm. I'm going to get tons, you know, I'm going to get uh, 20,000 impressions. But if I like, sh like wrote something that was like really powerful and chat, like challenge, like the quota or like ma made mm -hmm. a video, it gets a fraction of the, of the, like pe people don't see it. Mm -hmm. So I think what frustrates me about LinkedIn sometimes is it almost becomes like a corporate Facebook. And you, like, that's when I mm. or get yeah. off of LinkedIn is when I'm not like, I go on LinkedIn to learn. Yeah. And 
I feel like 90%, 95% of our industry's content, and this is one of the reasons why I love following you so much, is there's just not a ton of people like sharing their thoughts. It's yeah. more of, we open this building, we're hiring this position, mm. we just merged with so-and-so, we have this new product, we're at this conference, here's a selfie of everyone that I was with. And I'm guilty of it, I do it all yeah. the time. But uh, I just wish that there was like, or like, I'm gonna tag 50 people in the industry and hope that they engage mm. with us, so it gets more views. It's like, that's not the oh, point yeah. of LinkedIn. The point of LinkedIn yeah. is to share with each other ideas yeah. to challenge you. I almost wish I had someone uh, message me uh, I would say that's a negative, uh, that sweatshirt I was wearing, what is your story? Mm -hmm. They said they, the people on the sweatshirt were too old looking and had like thin hair and wrinkly and it made aging look bad. I wish someone <laughs> would comment that publicly. So people, because there's other people that probably thought that too, yeah. so that we actually can have conversation. I don't want like LinkedIn, everything that is said negatively is said in private and mm. that that, that that because of that, it never challenges the status quo. And that's like my one bone to pick with LinkedIn. I wish that their algorithm or our industry or whatever would would put out more content. Cause I don't like, I agree with 99% of your stuff, but there's some stuff that I don't agree with, you know, mm -hmm. and that's okay. And I think, but putting yourself out there like challenges you. And there's things that I have changed my mind because I've read mm -hmm. your stuff on it. And I think too many people are afraid to like not put their thoughts out there because it might offend someone else. Yeah. And we, I don't know if I, I'm not gonna name the organization. We worked with someone, filmed this guy's story. He was a hunter his whole life, world-class hunter. We put this story together about him, amazing. They couldn't share the story. We had to ax the thing completely because a donor was offended by hunting and oh, wow. and so we couldn't share this this guy's story is hidden from the world now this 96 97 year old man hidden from the world because a donor didn't like hunting and it's like that's not the point of this you know yeah. and I, I think that's the thing that bothers me about linkedin you might want to cut all this part out and i'm okay with oh, it. yeah this is this is totally getting cut out but i, I <laughs> I want to hear what you have to say. That's my tangent uh, about LinkedIn. So I love LinkedIn. I love the industry. There's so many, it's done wonders for Dash and for yeah. me personally. And met, you know, I've met the guy who married me and my wife through yeah. LinkedIn. But if there was a bone to pick. It's I wish it. I, I just hope that it doesn't become like a corporate. Yeah. Look. Hmm. So, anyways. Well, I uh, you know with LinkedIn, it's just kind of in, in response to that myself, I think about that all the time, man, all the time is like, uh, if, uh, you know what, I, I may, I may make a LinkedIn post based on what you just said, but now I'm flashing back to earlier in our conversation saying not everything is content. Sometimes you just have a conversation for the conversation. No, that's content. I, yeah. <laughs> I will, I've, I've had that post typed up a few times, but yeah, I fall into the trap of like I don't want to offend somebody, <laughs> dude. You know, but I here here's kind of my thought on that is, um, I I do try to be very authentic about the things that I post, and um, I think that I think that being able to let me start over there, um, you know, I I try to be authentic about the things that I post. And um, I do feel the same pressures of like, I think anybody who's creating content, you do get a little bit lost in like, oh, wait, that one got like 100 likes, that one got like 50, oh, whoa, this one got like 20 shares, and this is nonsense. Like, maybe I should do that. But then you're like, no, nope. you know, it's like, whether you have 40,000, 50,000 followers or 100, uh, what I realized about the people that follow me on LinkedIn is that they, the thing that they appreciate about me, the thing that they are following, in fact, is the fact that it's like, yeah, they're long, they're long posts, right? Like if you see something like I posted, you're like, uh, do I have three minutes to read this? Mm -hmm. like, okay. All right. I have three minutes. I'm going to go ahead and read it. Whereas everything else is like, okay, you see a couple selfies, you see a little, you know, thing, the little inspirational quote, you know, you go girl. And then it's like, okay, cool. I scrolled past that. 
I know, like I, I've had people unsolicited tell me like, hey, your content's too long. You need to go shorter. Hey, you need to do all of this in video. Think about, about how much more engagement you would have, um, et cetera. But, you know, I know my voice. I know, I know my format and I know my skill. And the thing is, if you read my posts, they have to be read, not heard. Yeah. You know, the, like think about um, if you really want to connect with the Bible, do you listen to a recording of the Bible or do you pick up the Bible and read it? Yeah, you pick it up and read it and listen to it. I, yeah. I listen to it while I look at it. So. <laughs> I do both, James. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. But if you had to choose between the two, like if you could only have an audio file of the Bible or you could only have the actual Bible. Yeah, and you, you, you Right. But why? It's slower. It's, you know, it's clunkier. You have to carry it around everywhere. Why would you choose the actual Bible instead of an audio file? Because it doesn't, it's unchanging. You can, you can consume it. You can read it again. You can make notes. You can, uh, it's depth over width. It's width is I can get four chapters done in an hour. Depth is I can, I can consume and eat, sleep and breathe. Mm -hmm. this two verses in an hour. Um, and I think that's, you know, so I, I'll, I'll yeah. hold my thoughts, but if, uh, how many times have you told your wife, I love you? A lot, a lot. What if you wrote the words, I love you on an index card and left it on her pillow? It would mean a lot, right? More. It's probably. same exact words, right? But it's, it's the intentionality of it. It's like, um, I put thought into writing this to share, mm -hmm. and then you are taking time to read it and interpret it in your own pace. And I think yeah. that's the thing is like, um, you know, and maybe that's a little bit of the hesitation I've had with video is like, you have to consume it the way I intend it is like, here's, here's the video, here's the 30 seconds, here's the captions. But with reading, I've had people, you know, tell me like, I've read this five times, just, just right now, I read it over five times again because I just needed to reabsorb this. And mm -hmm. it's like um, understanding your voice and, and the best way it can come out. I think that's it is whether you're on video, TikTok, Instagram, or LinkedIn, it's about authenticity. So going back to your earlier point about 95% of the content on LinkedIn, probably from our industry is a, yeah, it is. It is a corporate senior living Facebook of like, here's all this stuff. But I'll tell you what, my content stands out because of that. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, um, I could be filled with chagrin or I'm just like, I'm going to leverage that. I'm going to, I'm going to take advantage of the situation here. And, um, I know that people resonate with this stuff because, um, I, I know there's something about knowing that it's not going to do wonders for your metrics that people are like paying attention to. They're like, Oh, this doesn't have 50 hashtags on it. It has three. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a long format, not, not, you know, three sentences. So man, I'll tell you the people who get to the bottom of my post, I know that they're, you know, they're people that I really want to engage with. Yeah. And that's, I was, uh, making some videos for my best friend. He's a lawyer and he's like, don't you think this minute and a half video is a little long? Cause he's like, you know, we make some that are 15 seconds and that, that depth, if people get to the end of a minute and a half video of a lawyer they're probably going to call the lawyer whereas if you yeah. watch a seven second video of a lawyer hit like and keep scrolling probably not going to and so that's that's it i mean that is it goes right into your puzzles like when people consume that when they if you have a thousand people reading a three minute read mm -hmm. as opposed to ten thousand people liking a selfie of you right um, that depth with that thousand goes a lot longer than that that quick transaction with the 10,000. And I think that's what, what you're, uh, what you're good at. And well, the man, people that are on social media are good at, I mean, yeah. we are, my art full-time job is to consume those analytics to see why it was shared and why it was commented on and why it was liked and increase those in analytics for our customers. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Um, but the intention of it shouldn't be, you shouldn't feel that in the post. You shouldn't feel that they're right. posting this just to get a bunch of, you know, impressions that they're posting it because it's going to entertain, inspire, or educate, right. you know, desired audience. It's the, it's the outcome of the content 
that matters, right? So if and and I and I talk to my team about it too, is like, look, this this Instagram post that we make uh or and share may have um 20 likes and three comments. But if two out of those 20 people who liked it um follow us and then eventually come in and visit with us, you know, or reach out to us, like that's amazing. Are, are you kidding me? Like a, a was that two out of 20, a 10% like conversion rate. I mean, you know, a 2% conversion rate in social media is probably pretty decent. Right. So, or an engagement rate. So um, anyway, it's about authenticity. Um, let's wrap up here. We've had a really good conversation. Um, I think, you know, we, we went, kind of all over the place, which is good, which is great. And, you know, the theme of our conversation, the reason I wanted to talk to you and, um, you know, and do this as a standalone episode, I think it was necessary not to cut out all of the context of like, I reached out to you due to a, uh, you know, a business podcast and um, I called you because you hadn't called me back. And, you know, and like all of this, all of that context leads up to this kind of uh, takeaway for me, which is like, um, you know, it's, it's responsibility for ourselves, first of all, that we have to, we have to moderate, like, are we in the red? Are we in the yellow? Are we in the green? Um, I think that, you know, you, you talk about it, it's in your company's name, right. To be thinking about the dash, not, not the, um, not the bookends, I write about it all the time about like appreciating where we are in this, this great honor that we have. And it's like, sometimes we have to be conscientious that we, we don't consume wisdom. We actually gain it. Right. And um, by the way, that's why my company's name is called bear wise consulting um, because wisdom is not something you just gain or given. You have to bear the process. It's a hurt it's like it's a painful process to gain wisdom so you have to bear the process of wisdom sure that's did. where that's where it comes from by the way I did not know that that's awesome yeah um but it's um i think you know maybe this conversation kind of uh sparks another conversation somebody has this with you know their buddy or a coworker or something and um i am glad you are not unwell and uh you know, that you're, you're doing okay. Hey, listen, also, before we go, I gotta, uh, you gotta put it out into the universe. Um, what do you think, uh, Bulldogs Longhorn, you know, game in, in January? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, everyone thinks, Texas always says they're back, but then they'll go lose to Baylor, you know, Oklahoma, <laughs> something like that. We'll see, you know. Okay. If that uh, was the Georgia, that was Georgia for the longest time. I had to deal with it. And then the last two years we've, Get the monkey off of our back. So listen, you know, if we my, if we make it, we're going. Uh, we're going to the no, game. We gotta, yeah, we got to go. Go, got to go. And um, my, I will say this: my favorite team is Georgia, and my second favorite team is whoever plays Alabama. So hey, I was, I was a big Longhorn fan a couple of weeks ago. Nice, I'll take it, man. Um, dude, thanks for having this conversation with me. It wasn't as bad as we maybe thought it would be. No, it was great. Yeah. Um, Appreciate you having me and hopefully we'll do, do it again sometime soon. Yeah. Sounds good, man. Take care of yourself. Let's uh, stay in touch in between these uh, moments in our own dash. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Live your dash. Yeah. Thanks. For seeing you. See you. Man. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Level Up Leadership Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to the podcast and its YouTube channel. Better yet, share it with someone you know who is on their own leadership development journey. I hope you'll be back for the next episode of Level Up. But until then, I hope that you are leading well and remember that you are living your legacy today. So make it a good one.